A reading from the book of the prophet Nehemiah. The whole people gathered as wine in the open space before the water gate, and they called upon Ezra the scribe to bring forth the book of the law of Moses, which the Lord prescribed for Israel. On the first day of the seventh month, therefore, Ezra the priest brought the law before the assembly, which consisted of men, women, and those children old enough to understand. Standing at one end of the open place that was before the water gate, he read out of the book from daybreak until midday in the presence of the men, the women, and those children old enough to understand. And all the people listened attentively to the book of the law. Ezra the scribe stood on a wooden platform that had been made for the occasion. He opened the scroll so that all the people might see it, for he was standing higher up than any of the people. And as he opened it, all the people rose. Ezra blessed the Lord the great God, and all the people, their hands raised high, answered, Amen, Amen. Then they bowed down and prostrated themselves before the Lord, their faces on the ground. As the people remained in their places, Ezra read plainly from the book of the law of God, interpreting it so that all could understand what was read. Then Nehemiah, that is, His Excellency, and Ezra the priest, scribe, and the Levites who were instructing the people, said to the people, Today is holy to the Lord our God. Do not be sad, do not weep. For all the people were weeping as they heard the words of the law. He said further, Go, eat rich foods and drink sweet drinks and a lot portion to those who had nothing prepared. For today is holy to our God. Do not be saddened this day, for rejoicing in the Lord must be your strength. And the Levites quieted all the people, saying, Hush, for today is holy, and you must not be saddened. Then all the people went to eat and drink, to distribute portions, and to celebrate with great joy for they understood the words that had been expounded to them. Responsorial Psalm The precepts of the Lord give joy to the heart. The law of the Lord is perfect, refreshing the soul. The decree of the Lord is trustworthy, giving wisdom to the simple. The precepts of the Lord give joy to the heart. The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The command of the Lord is clear, enlightening the eye. The precepts of the Lord give joy to the heart. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The ordinances of the Lord are true, all of them just. The precepts of the Lord give joy to the heart. They are more precious than gold, than a heap of purest gold, sweeter also than syrup or honey from the comb. The precepts of the Lord give joy to the heart. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus appointed 72 other disciples whom he sent ahead of him in pairs to every town and place he intended to visit. He said to them, The harvest is abundant, but the laborers are few. So ask the master of the harvest to send out laborers for his harvest. Go on your way. Behold, I am sending you like lambs among wolves. Carry no money bag, no sack, no sandals, and greet no one along the way. Into whatever house you enter, first say, Peace to this 
peace to this household. If a peaceful person lives there, your peace will rest on him. But if not, it will return to you. Stay in the same house and eat and drink what is offered to you. For the laborer deserves his payment. Do not move about from one house to another. Whatever town you enter and they welcome you, eat what is set before you. Cure the sick in it and say to them, The kingdom of God is at hand for you. Whatever town you enter and they do not receive you, go out into the streets and say, The dust of your town that clings to our feet, even that we shake off against you. Yet know this, the kingdom of God is at hand. I tell you, it will be more tolerable for Sodom on that day than for that town. What kind of harvest does the Lord want us to reap today for his kingdom? When Jesus commissioned 70 of his disciples to go on mission, he gave them a vision of a vast field that is ready to be harvested for the kingdom of God. Jesus frequently used the image of, of uh, Jesus frequently used the image of a harvest to convey the coming of God's reign on earth. The harvest is the fruition of much labor and growth, beginning with the sowing of seeds, then growth to maturity, and finally the reaping of fruit for the harvest. In like manner, the word of God is sown in the hearts of receptive men and women who hear his word accept it with trust and obedience, and then share the abundant fruit of God's word in their life with others. The harvest Jesus had in mind was not only the gathering in of the people of Israel, but all the peoples and nations of the world. John the Evangelist tells us that God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. What does Jesus mean when he says his disciples must be lambs in the midst of wolves? The prophet Isaiah foretold the time when wolves and lambs will dwell in peace. This certainly refers to the second coming of the Lord Jesus, when all will be united under the one lordship of Jesus, after he has put down his enemies and established the reign of God over the heavens and the earth. In the meantime, the disciples must expect opposition and persecution from those who would oppose the gospel. Jesus came to lay down his life for us as our sacrificial lamb to atone for our sins and the sins of the world. We, in turn, must be willing to offer our lives with gratitude and humble service for our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. God gives us his life-giving word that we may have abundant life in him. He wills to work in and through each one of us in his glory. God shares his word with us, and he commissions us to speak it boldly and plainly to others. Do you witness the truth and joy of the gospel by word and example to those around you? Let us pray. Lord Jesus, may the joy and truth of the gospel Transform my life that I may witness it to those around me. Grant that I may spread your truth and merciful love wherever I go. Amen. <music>